Yeah, so um, soursop sour. Uh, it was a fruit I had never heard of before until I went fruit shopping for weird fruits for sour beers. Um, it is a tropical fruit. Uh, kind of looks like a spiky uh, avocado or a spiky pawpaw, if you know what a pawpaw looks like. Um, it, I, I tried some of it. Uh, and the sample that I tried, I got like, it tasted just like, um, it's pineapple banana smoothie. Um, so I, I was really excited to brew with it. Um, so one thing you may notice about, uh, this beer is it has a very intense haze to it. Um, a lot of time haze in beer is caused by, you know, suspended particles from hops. Uh, this has almost no hops in it. You might see it says zero IBUs in it. Um, that's from the pectin in the fruit, staying suspended in the beer and causing a permanent haze. So you also won't get any kind of head that sticks around ever, no matter how many times you swirl it or try to agitate it. Uh, and that is because of the process this beer is soured through. Uh, so we use a bacteria, uh, same bacteria that's used to sour milk into yogurt, um, lactobacillus, uh, produces lactic acid. Uh, and that comes off as a very pleasant uh, sourness or pleasant tartness. Um, so if you take a sip of this beer, you know, it's lightly sour, uh, pleasantly tart, um, but it doesn't tickle your throat or burn your throat like a vinegar would. Um, has a nice body to it. Um, again, that's primarily from the pectin, but also from uh, the amount of residual sugars. So from all the beers we've tried today, this has the most residual sugar in it. Um, that's not too surprising, I think, with this lineup. Um, but comparing this to some other beers, I think you might guess that they are sweeter than this, even though this has more sugar in it because of that sourness character to it. it takes away a lot of that. Um, and I think on the finish of this beer, what lingers for me or what I kind of get in the sides of my tongue is, uh, you know, a really pleasant, uh, smooth banana note. Uh, so partially that's from the fruit, but when I tasted this fruit, um, I decided I really wanted to use a wit beer yeast, uh, to ferment this, uh, and wit beer is known for, uh, banana light clove, uh, flavors. Um, so when I do fruit sours, I really like to use, uh, yeasts that have very fruity, uh, characters to them. Um, I think it just uh, enhances and ties everything together a little more. Um, yeah, definitely this, a banana note for sure. Yeah. Yeah. With, uh, with this, I, I threw uh, kind of a, a cured meat down as uh, the pairing. Um, I, I, I was taking a uh, kind of a, a jump there because I think it's cured meats generally really good with uh, a sour beer. Uh, that saltiness enhances a lot of uh, the flavors that you're going to get, especially in a fruited sour. Um, I was a little worried though because sometimes cured meat can be a little smoky. And if you're drinking a sour beer and have any kind of smoky flavors with it, it turns the entire sensory experience of whatever you're eating and whatever you're drinking into just ham. <laughs> so here's my first shot at having a little bit of prosciutto with the sour sup. Um, so while you're tasting that, um, uh, can you talk a little bit more about, um, 
sort of that bacterial process, and this is from a question in the chat too, um, is that uh, something that's unique to Caboose? Um, and then um, looks like Team Beer is also asking too that, um, that uh, it, and which is true, I, I've noticed so many more sours on the market recently. Yeah. Um, you know, they, they seem to be kind of on the rise. So um, I guess it's kind of a two-parter question there. Yeah, so, um, you know, historically, beers went sour all the time because you had a, a lack of, um, you know, ability to really uh, sanitize your equipment and isolate your yeast strains. Um, and, you know, for centuries, no one knew what yeast was or what bacteria was. So beers went sour all the time. Um, once, uh, you know, things got a little more controlled, refrigeration became a thing um, because the b bacteria do like hotter temperatures. Um, and lagers got really big. Uh, brewers obsessed over making very, very clean beer. Um, so sour beer kind of faded away in style. Uh, Belgium and Germany uh, kind of have always made a few select styles that are sour. Um, uh, so Belgium be being uh, Lambics or Goose or uh, Flanders style uh, red or brown ales. Uh, and Germany, you have uh, Berliner Weiss and uh, Goza uh, style sour beers. Um, so they've always been around. I think uh, kettle sours really blew up a few years ago. And a kettle sour is a way, uh, it's essentially saying that you are going to inoculate this uh, wort, which is unfermented beer, just essentially sugar water, with uh, this bacteria while it's still in your brew kettle. And then you're going to boil it um, to kill all that bacteria so that you're still keeping it separate from your precious expensive equipment because you don't want any kind of contamination. Um, now, uh, and I hope I'm not too, talking too much about this, but um, no. so I'm not totally sure why they blew up, but they're, in my opinion, really delicious. Um, I gravitate towards sours. Uh, probably as much as I'd gravitate towards like an IPA. Um, in general, I have very basic uh, <laughs> beers that I follow the mass, mass market a lot of the times, but I want to brew more than just that. Um, sure. So I, at Caboose, we don't do kettle sours. We do a um, bacteria yeast co-fermentation, uh, which I think you get uh, a lot of interaction in the metabolism of both organisms uh, and some delicate notes uh, that are produced that you wouldn't otherwise get if you boiled it as a kettle sour. Um, and it's kind of hard to describe. I, I want to say like floral notes, but that's not entirely accurate. There's just a liveliness to um, and a, a lack of cleanness to a co-fermented, you know, uh, sour beer, whereas there that's missing. It's very clean with a kettle sour, which isn't bad. Uh, I just happen to prefer this co-fermentation. Um, and then we, uh, essentially kill that yeast by dosing in an amount of, uh, isoalpha acids from hops. Uh, so, Lactobacillus is very hop intolerant. Hops are a natural uh, antimicrobial. Um, so once that fermentation is complete, we will dose that in there uh, to make sure that it does not contaminate our whole brewery and brewing equipment because we don't want to only be sour beer brewers. 